Okay, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, today's date, it is February 4th of 2018, and it is 4 a.m. in the morning. Of course, you could be looking at the screen, and you're going to see that I lied to you. Fake news. Because down in the corner on the screen, I believe you can see it showing that it's uh, 3.51 a.m. Uh, so let's see. An up this is going to be an update video. Uh, yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, I uh, took an Uber to um, my skin doctor's office. About six months ago, I had, if you watch my videos for the last couple years, say, you would uh, very clearly see a very big spot on the top of my head. That was cancerous. And the my regular doctor, I finally asked him about it, you know, and he said, oh, that's cancer. He said, we got to, you know, do a biopsy, but, and, uh, how come I don't don't how come you people didn't spot it? It was on top of my head for ever. Nobody ever said anything. I don't believe. Anyway, about uh, six months ago, the uh, uh, doctor that they sent me to took it off, and uh, so this was a six months checkup. I went back, and you know he looked at that, which was fine, and then he checked me from the waist up. Uh, any place the sun would shine, because that's basically, I think, the way you get ultraviolet light, I guess, is, uh, so I got a clean bill of health, and I go back, and he'll check me in six months again. Uh, Uber's uh, added a, something different at the bottom of their bill. I forget what it is, but it's maybe it was something like that on there. They just changed the name or something. I don't know. Uh, the Uber driver that I took uh, had been driving Uber for a year, and uh, he was really nice, talkative. And I mean, some people wouldn't want that uh, talkative and uh, very nice guy. Um, then the Uber coming back, back from the doctor's office uh, I asked him how long you have uh, how long you've been driving for Uber and he said uh, this is my first day and you are my first uh, customer so uh, I gave him a five dollar tip just to encourage him because I think, you know, so when he goes home, when he went home after that day, he, I don't know how he did for the rest of the day, you know, but he'd probably go home and say, oh, you know, this is, this is okay. It went okay. I think it's going to be okay. And then I think you'll probably find that it's not so okay. I mean, to me, it seems like a pretty neat job, the, the driving for Uber or Lyft uh, in, in many ways. Back about a year or so ago, a couple years ago, I watched a ton of videos on YouTube of YouTube drivers and Lyft drivers talking about the pros and the cons and and all that type of stuff. I was interested in that. Recently, I've been watching an awful lot of videos of um, military, you know, what it's like to to go into the, I want to say Salvation Army, what it's like to go into the uh, French Foreign Legion and then uh, videos from, you know, Army, Navy, and, and some uh, retire a lot of retired veterans talking about what's the military like, what's basic training like, uh, the best jobs in the military, that type. I've been watching a bunch of those videos, but I watch a lot of YouTube videos, and I'm sure you do too, or you wouldn't be watching my crappy videos. Uh, I wonder how many of you watched the uh, State of the Union address. Uh, 
for those outside the United States, uh, the Constitution of the United States states in there that, uh, okay, I thought I would see it right here at the top. Constitution says, background, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Article 2, Section 3 of the United States Constitution, the President, uh, he shall from time to time give to Congress information of the State of the Union and recommend to their consideration such measures as he shall judge necessary and expedient. So it was left up to, that was it. Uh, our Constitution, of course, the U.K., it's my understanding, has no constitution. They don't actually have a constitution. Um, but our constitution was very well written and has served us until the last few years, has served us, you know, very, very well. But it's very, there's not much in it. And George Washington, of, of all of our presidents, I, you know, the, we have uh, professors and historians and you can go to Wikipedia and see who's, you know, uh, maybe YouTube videos too. You know, who who were the five best U United States presidents? Uh, things like who's the, who were the worst? Things like that. But uh, I think when you're ranking U.S. presidents, George Washington, who was our first president, I think he would have to be our number one president because so much was left to him. He had, you know, the Constitution uh, presented to him, and he had to... Now, when it came to the State of Union, he just uh, sent something printed over, you know, over to him, or written out, you know, I guess, to him. Uh, and someplace down the line, the president started once a year going to Congress, and so since we have a House and a Senate, sort of based, you know, the House is elected every two years. The Senate is elected, I think they have four-year and six-year term, I believe. I've forgotten now. But um, anyway, so you've, sort of like the U.K. parliament, like, like, you know, you have your house and then in the U.K., then you have your uh, House of Lords. Sort of that way. And I, well, here, you know, the house is like, I think, 530 members or something like that from little districts. And then you have two senators from each state. And there the Constitution was changed. In the beginning, the senators were elected by the state a legislature in the state. And now, of course, they are elected by the people of the state. They don't represent a, they represent the entire state, not a half of a state. But uh, the idea, and a good one, and that might have been copied from well, I don't know. But you, you know, you have the House, and since it's since those people are elected every two years, um, if they take hold of some type of mania, or they go like, you know, back in the fifties or whatever, there was the uh, fear of communist and communism and People thought there was a communist underneath their every bed, and Republicans were calling uh, Democrats communist. <laughs> the Republicans back then uh, called Franklin D. Roosevelt a communist. They called President Harry Truman a communist. They uh, Senator there was Senator McCarthy who was a Republican senator, at doing the same type of thing and holding hearings and accusing everybody. Uh, George C. Marshall, uh, General Marshall, was 
one of our greatest citizens. Uh, he wasn't a, a great, he wasn't an orator, and uh, he was never, I don't think he was, ever, he was never elected to office, but he, uh, one of our greatest citizens, like, you know, like, sort of like uh, Churchill for the UK or something, you know, a great, he doesn't, he doesn't get the rec uh, recognition that he should. He, he ran uh, World War II for the United States from Washington, D.C. He picked the generals, you know. Uh, he picked Patton. He picked uh, Eisenhower for their positions and all that type of stuff. Then after uh, doing all of that, he uh, was in charge of them. He became Secretary of State. He was appointed Secretary of State. And I forget all the offices that he... And he was worn out, and he uh, gave, and when a president needed help, they turned to him, and there was a Marshall Plan for Europe. Uh, and uh, the Republicans uh, attacked him as, I'm not sure if they had the nerve to call him a communist, but they attacked, you know. So, but you have... You know, George Washington, who decided about the State of the Union address uh, for his time, how what it should be, how he should do it, and all these other things he fleshed out there just in the, the when the Constitution was written and he became the president, uh, the rest of the world, you know, the leaders in the rest of the world, which were, you know, kings and queens and whatever they thought, ah, so he's going to be the king of the United States. Ah, yeah, you know, democracy or whatever, but uh, he will, because in the past that was the history of the world, he will be, you know, the emperor of the United States or the king of the United States. It's just a matter of time. And, uh, of course, he didn't. And uh, in the beginning people came to him when he was elected president of the United States and uh, said, you know, what should we call you? Shall we call you your majesty? Shall we call you, you know? <laughs> and he said, uh, call me Mr. President. So, so anyway, we have the State of the Union, and the State of the Union, back to that State of the Union address, uh, it's held in the House chamber because it's, you know, bigger, so they can get the the House members, and then they can also fit the 100 United States senators in there. And then, of course, they have the Supreme Court. Now, it's not it's not required, you know. It's not you don't not mandatory, but anyway, Supreme Court will show up. Uh, the Joint Chiefs of Staff will show up, and they'll sit in there. Uh, I believe they invite. Uh, ambassadors to the United States, to, you know, they can they can come. There's space up there for them. They're not part of our government. I mean, they're. But uh, so you ha you know you have the Congress there. At at some point, I've always been interested in politics. I was interested in politics and government when I was a kid. Uh, you know, before the internet. Uh, the United States had a government printing office that printed, you know, everything. And every, not every day, but maybe every week or something, I was ordering in stuff. I ordered in all the government publication, you know, the for the military manual on Arctic survival and on tropical survival. And I ordered in books on, uh, from the government printing office on everything. So I've always been interested, and I I remember watching the uh, different investigations and hearings, and the House Un-American Activities Committee, which was uh, the most un-American organization we've ever had in the United States. That's what I'm talking about. Getting you know, 
carried away. And, and that, so that's why you have the House that is, because they're elected every two years. And then the idea is the Senate, they're elected for a longer period of time. So if the House were, if it was just, if you just had the House of Representatives and something came up, you know, like uh, blacks are going to, when we had slavery, you know, blacks are going to uh, revolt. There'll be a slave re revolt, so let's send them all to Africa. Or let's uh, do such and such. Or the communists are taking over the country. And, of course, a lot of things were b done back then that shouldn't have been done. You know, changing the... Uh, Pledge of Allegiance to put in under God. That was Republicans mainly. <clears throat> but the Democrats couldn't very well say, well, no, we don't want to, you know. But that was put in. And a teacher's having to swear an oath, you know, to the United States and <clears throat> that type of stuff. But if you have a Senate that is a, a body that is elected for a longer period of time, uh, maybe they'll be more stable and they can prevent maybe some of the abuses of uh, that happen. So you, uh, so every year the president makes his State of the Union address. I wonder if this is going to enlarge. Okay, but I don't want to hear sound here. Okay, good. Uh but at some point, I cannot stand to watch the State of the Union address because in this case, of course, here is President Bush, a Republican. Whoops, okay. I thought I was going to make it bigger. Well, you still got it on your screen. And this is the vice president. He is the presiding officer, although he doesn't have to be all for the Senate. And then this is the Speaker of the House. So in this case, we know that since she's a Democrat, we know that, you know, that, 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 she's, uh, that she's there. So I just can't stand to watch it anymore. And the reason being, one of the big reasons is, you know, the camera zeroes in and shows this type of a view you're seeing. So you have the president in this case, a Republican, and you have the vice president, you know, a Republican, and then the House of Representatives is, at this time, you know, at that time, not now, <laughs> uh, Democratic. So you have the, uh, have the Speaker of the House there. And what happens is the president makes is making his address, and it's, absolutely makes me sick to my stomach the uh, president will make a statement in this case let's okay you know in this case president bush makes a statement you know uh, what we need to do is we need to cut taxes on the rich of course he probably wouldn't put it that way we need to cut taxes on the rich and the Republicans jump to their feet. They applaud. Of course, the camera swings out to, you know, and the Republicans jump to their feet. They applaud. They applaud. And the Democrats sit there. And the same with this. You'd have the vice president get up and applaud, or maybe he might stay to stay in his seat, but he applauds because he's a Republican. And the Speaker of the House just sits there, doesn't applaud. Then uh, the president at some point will say, in this case we're saying he's a Republican, he will say, uh, you know, we want to do everything we can for our service people, our brave heroes who are serving in the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard, and and you know, uh, everything, and Democrats and Republicans will, you know, will applaud. And uh, then he'll, and that's just just the way it is, and I just hate that. And two, the camera will go, 
it'll show that, you know. And then uh, the president will say, "We need, well, when he's well, we know we need to support our brave military fighting heroes." The camera goes to the Secretary of Defense. The camera goes to the Joint Chiefs of Staff and show that if the president said something about we need to, you know, improve the internal or the uh, uh, income tax, you know, it go to the Secretary of the Treasury. And j- they just do that camera work. And I just hate, I hate that. Uh, and I can't stand to watch it. Haven't been able to watch it for years. And then it, well, I think the last straw for me was, and I don't know, I know that uh, Donald Trump isn't responsible for it. I know that uh, President Obama is not responsible, and I know that Bush wasn't responsible. I know that uh, Bill Clinton wasn't responsible. I'm not sure at what point they started putting people up in the balconies with the first lady or whatever. Uh, Sully, the guy who, uh, the pilot who landed the airplane on the uh, on the river and made a successful landing, and he was up there with other people. And then they ha- they may have a Medal of Honor winner up there who just got the Medal of Honor, and. Uh, they started putting these people up there, you know, heroes or whatever. And, you know, the the widow of a soldier killed or something put them up there. And the camera goes up. And everybody, of course, you've got, you know, Democrat or Republican, you've got to applaud. Um, and that just, I just hate that. And that's. That's why I don't watch the State of the Union address. This time, I usually I end up seeing clips of it when, you know, you can't help but, uh, you know, you watch something on YouTube or you watch a news and they have clips, clips, clips for uh, Trump's State of the Union address. I... I, don't, I didn't hardly see any clips at all. I think I saw one very short clip. And so that's fine. That's fine with me. Uh, when I was born in 1941, uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt was president of the United States. And... Uh, I don't remember him at all. And I think he died about 1945. I believe it was 1945. Uh, not, um, yeah. And so I would have been four. I think he died in 1944, maybe. I'd have been four years old. I would have been in California. Born in Missouri. Uh, I was born in March of 1941. Uh, Japan attached. Attach, attacked Pearl Harbor in December, December seventh of nineteen forty-one, and both my my parents took me uh, out to California, and they both worked building Liberty ships, and uh, so then we came back when World War Two ended. Now I remember a little bit about being out in California at that age. I remember a little bit of an earthquake. I remember getting lost. Uh, I remember when we left that we, uh, my parents left uh, my tricycle in California. I asked where my tricycle was and they said it was in the car and we'd be taking it. <clears throat> they didn't, they left it there. They left a cat there at the park, Golden Gate Park. Remember little tiny bits. Uh, so the, the next president was, uh, President Harry Truman from my state, uh, state of Missouri. And I do remember him, of course. And 
The first president that I voted for was John F. Kennedy, and I had to vote by absentee ballot because I was going to weld. I was from Missouri, but I was going to welding school in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, Lincoln Electric Company. And so I voted for the first president that I voted for, that I could vote for, was John F. Kennedy. And uh, so then... uh, You know, recently, uh, I voted for President Barack Obama, and I sort of thought, I'm going to be 87, no, 77. I never can remember my date of birth uh, in March of this year, but when I voted back for uh Obama, I thought, okay, this is probably the last president that I'll be voting for, uh, you know, at that age. And so I first president was John F. Kennedy, and I thought the last president would be, you know, Obama. And, uh, but we have a president after Obama. I didn't vote for him, but I voted, but I didn't vote for him. And uh, I guess I'll be around maybe in 2020, maybe, uh, and have to have to vote for a president. So uh, did I tell you what I wanted to tell you about? I think I just told you that I I just don't like State of the Union address and the way I, the way it's done. It's, it's things have really have gone downhill, and like I said earlier, our Constitution, the United States Constitution, was was a great document. The men who, you know, drew it up, I mean, it wasn't perfect, and I mean, it allowed slavery, although the founding fathers knew that, that, you know, that wasn't right. Well, the northern, you know, uh, members of the Congress knew that, you know, slavery wasn't right, but... Uh, and women couldn't vote in the beginning, and, and but it, still, it was a great document, and it served us well. But now, things have gone to hell, and I don't know what can be done to, you know, to correct it. Well, I do know some things that could that could be done, but it doesn't look like they're going to be done, or it doesn't look like they can be done. It's very difficult to. Our Constitution has been amended and changed, Uh, not majorly, but uh, it has been done. But it's uh, very difficult to do, and uh, the things that need to be done, I think, to fix some of the problems, uh, I don't see... Congress would have to pass it, and I I forget now whether it's a two-thirds majority in both houses or a three-fourths. I think it's a two-third. And then it has to go to the states, and I think three-fourths of the 50 states, their state legislatures have to, uh, you know, and the things that need to be done, that, that just isn't going to, uh, isn't going to happen. Uh so I don't know what's going to uh, I don't know what's going to happen because of uh, the political atmosphere. Mainly, the Republicans have always been, in my opinion, the the bad people. Of course, not as bad as they are now, but they've always been the ones who have 
uh, done dirty tricks, uh, lied, uh, used race uh, to, you know, to win. Back, I think, when Dukakis was running against the first, was it the first Bush? I can't remember. Uh, I believe that's the elections where they were there for a while. They were talking about law and order. You know, we need law and order. That was code words, you know, racial code words. That was, you know, uh, using blacks and uh, to scare people and stuff. It's just it's a sad situation that we have. And I feel sorry for our allies and around the world that have to uh, have to deal with the United States right now. All I can say is, if you can, hang in there. Um, uh, one of the one of the major problems is bribery in the United States when it comes to politics is we've legalized it. Uh, and the people who run for Congress or whatever, they have to raise a tremendous amount of money in order to get elected. And so they make promises and donors go to them uh, with fistful of money and say, here, and, uh, you know, vote for a tax cut for the wealthy or here's money, uh, vote to uh, not allow gun checks or to, you know, what, whatever their thing is, they go there with this money. And uh, it's just absolutely toxic. And the major corporations or whatever, of course, they love the Republicans because the Republicans want no taxes on wealthy people and corporations, and they uh, want, Republicans don't want any kind of regulation on chemical companies or pharmaceutical companies or uh, that type of stuff, no regulation. So the, But the corporations, a lot of them, they take a lot of money in each hand and they go to whoever's running you know, the Republican that's running and they give it to him and then they find the Democrat who's running and they they give him, you know, they give him the money. They just want to make sure that whoever gets in there has been bribed and that they know they can go back and go in and say, hey, we gave you a lot of money. We'd like to talk to you. And how about uh, doing such and such? It's just, uh, it is just a mess. Uh you're probably tired of politics. We all are. In the United States, we're all sick and tired of politics. Um, well, it'll be today. That's almost 4.30. I'll be getting this today. Uh, when I looked at these in the past, I'm sure the price of these type of things were a stabilizer for the, you know, your, uh, put your camera on it. And when you move and you walk or whatever, it has weights that uh, balance it out, so it takes that out. And uh, these things, you couldn't, you couldn't get one that was inexpensive, I don't believe, in the past. They were really expensive, and here's one for $50, so I ordered it, and I should get it today. So if you've watched my videos in the past, my, especially my walking and talking videos where I'm walking around and... You're seeing the local scenery. <laughs> and uh, so what I'll do is uh, I've got three different cameras. So I'll do it with, your, with you know, so. Um, but I'll, sh I'll walk a little bit with the without this on the camera. Then I'll take the same walk and we'll see how it, how it works out. It should work out okay. I think it's a little complicated to get it set up. But I saw some YouTube videos uh, where people are showing how to set the uh, how to set the thing up. It has weights down here. 
It comes with different, some the weights that you see here, but you can take them off or add them. And uh, this part that you add up here, the plate, you know, it slides along. So anyway, I, I'm not sure if I'll show you how to adjust it or if I'll just show you a walking and talking video with it uh, without being on the camera and then with being on the camera. And like I said, I got three different cameras. Uh, digital cameras. I have, as you can see, I have two Logitech uh, USB cameras. And I have, well, more than two. But just two hooked up at a time here. So I'll be doing that. Um, I I got this the other day. And uh, I'll be doing a review of it. And which camera is this camera? Let me turn it on. Here's the... That means that it's charged up, the blue. And then the red needs, uh, means it needs to be charged up. Or it's charging. I can't remember now. Uh, I'd like it. I didn't haven't had a chance to play with it a lot, but um, and I've only tried it so far with. Uh, I always have to think when I do this. What am I going to? Um, you know, what am I going to pull up? I want to make sure I don't pull up the wrong. You know, the wrong thing. But um, it works works really good. It's funny, of course, it's going to depend on the type of uh, cell phone or tablet or whatever that you have. I don't have one where that, that supports drawing or whatever. So... Um, you can use either end. The of course, this one here is like. But uh, I like it so far. But I, I need to uh, test it out a little more. But pretty, especially when you have these on a cell, small cell phone or whatever, and you have these things close to you know close together and. So. Uh, I think that's it. I finally got one of these at a, a long time ago when Radio Shack was even in business. And I don't think Radio Shack was the first. Uh, they had these frame devices and you could uh, put your pictures or video or whatever in and... Uh, I wanted one, but it, it was just too much money for the, uh, and then it got to the point where, I think this was $50. Um, I haven't done a review on this yet. I need to do a review on it. But um, it, uh, it got where, you know, for fifty dollars, you can actually buy a you can buy a computer. Uh, but I I went and I ended up getting one anyway. So I just I haven't messed with it yet. I just loaded in a few. They're not pictures that I really picked. They were just pictures that I had, and I put it on the uh, card. So. And I really haven't played with, so I want to pick out some good pictures, you know, and put them on there. And they can do some other stuff, but I'm just mainly, that's my son, but it's not very, from here, you know, from your perspective, it's not, well, wait a minute, let's see. It's not, uh, change cameras here, maybe. There we go. Okay, as you can see, the, it's not an IPS display, so... I don't see it that bad, but, uh, yeah, that's not, it doesn't, uh, so. Do I look like, what was that, that movie, Star, 
not Star Trek, where the gross fat alien is up there, and I, I think I kind of look like him. Anyway, I wanted to uh, thank you very much for watching the video, and uh, I'll be back. Thank you again for watching. We're almost at 2,500 subscribers. Very close. So if a few of you who are not subscribed, if you subscribe, I'll be up to 2,500 subscribers. So thank you very much for watching.